welcome to episode, I have no idea what episode number this is going to be, of Gallifrey Private Radio. Um, I am your one of your hosts, uh, David Beauchamp, which you probably know already for if you watch more than one episode, please, hopefully. And I'll let my other panelists this time introduce themselves. I am Dr. Sex. Yes, I am. Hi, I'm Clayton Wick. Uh, I'm pretty new to Doctor Who, but... Uh... I've been really getting into it since Davey introduced me to it. Yes, he's one of the many, many people I have introduced to the show, which I'm very, very happy about. The more the merrier is what I always say. Um, first off, I want to say I had a great time at TimeGate. Uh, it was a phenomenal little convention down in Atlanta. I suggest everybody go next year. Um, had a blast, met Sophie Aldred, um, sweetheart of a person. Um, if, for those that don't want, didn't watch Classic Who, she was ace. Uh, Sebastian McCoy's companion during his tenure on Doctor Who. And you guys went to a different convention this weekend, uh, An Amazement in Raleigh, North Carolina. How did that go, go for you guys? Oh my god, I got me a little doctor with a Fez cell phone charm. They make TARDIS earrings and stuff too. And my friend was dressed up as a TARDIS. Nice. I didn't see the TARDIS, which makes me sad, but I didn't die. And that's always a win in my book on a convention weekend. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, we'll be at Con Carolinas next weekend, me and Clayton. We'll be doing some more interviews and things like that. So there's still a chance for him to die this weekend, but I'm going to make sure if he does die, he dies happy. But um, getting, getting past all that, um, we are here to discuss the almost people. Um, and what a mind fuck, sorry, I had to use the word there, so mind fuck sort of episode. Because I know for one, I did not see that coming at all at the end. Oh my god. And if you haven't seen the episode yet, spoilers to like, to the extreme. So, but before we get into the, the spoilers, um, what did you guys particularly like about this episode? really like the doctor kind of tricking Amy a little bit. Him being like, mm, let's switch shoes. And he found out, you know, what what they were really talking, like, how, what Amy and Rory were actually talking about. So, he's very tricksy. Um, well, I mean, River did say the doctor lies. Yes. I mean... A lot of it was fantastic, though. I loved it. He didn't really lie, though. People just made assumptions. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I also, the, dang, the flesh is really smart, just because, like, how, what, Jennifer? Yeah. She's like, oh, well, I'm just gonna make me another flesh, and I'm gonna trick Rory, because I'm a bitch. No, no, she, you know, survival <laughs> instincts, man. Yeah. I mean, they were, wow. I just, it kept you on your, your toes throughout mm -hmm. the show. Yeah. It didn't just kind of, like, sometimes in episodes, you'll just be like, yeah, and then you're like, oh. Yeah. 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 So what about you, Clayton? What did you particularly like about this episode? Uh, I, I think that it was pretty clear, just from sort of a foreshadowing standpoint, that someone was a ganger that we didn't know about, and they went with the one that we had absolutely no reason to suspect. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I think um, for me... One of, my, one of my favorite favorite parts about this episode was the way Matt Smith played off of Matt Smith. He yeah. had way too much fun um, playing, you know, playing two doctors that interacted with one another, um, and that really was that was awesome. You know, you could really tell how much he, he enjoyed and loved doing that those scenes together with himself. Um, so now, now, now that we've talked about what we liked, sort of quickly, um, what didn't you like about the episode? Did you have any issues or problems or anything like that? Not really. I mean, it. Well, I mean, the only thing I guess that kind of annoyed me was that, you know, Rory was way too hardcore. And took, you know, he wanted to save Jennifer, but he was just straying off too much. It's like he was trying to be a superhero when he's not. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said last time, I just. I, Rory sort of felt. Like he wasn't being Rory. Yeah. But this episode, I, I thought he went back to be more like the Rory we know. That's true. And I gotta say, I do love his comment about the guns. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a great, great line. 
She's like, he's like, I really need. He's like, I really need someone to, he's someone strong to open this door. I'm or He's like, oh. And I'm just like, you're still scrawny as crap, Rory. <laughs> but yeah, that was a great little scene for Rory. What about you, Clayton? I think that it makes sense some of what happened toward the end of the episode, but it also makes the Doctor that much less sympathetic if he's aware of the fact that the Amy that he's that's, that he's had accompanying him for all this time was one of the flesh, then it doesn't really make sense to allow her to live and then allow all of these others to die just so that he can prove a point to an Amy who isn't even in the same room as him. <sighs> See, I don't, I don't think that was the case. I don't think he knew right away. I, I think after Tessa, for Tessa, he kept performing, that, you know, he finally realized what was going on. Oh, my, my impression was that from the end of the episode, he's got a really good idea what's going on, and just that weird sort of lack of respect for sentient life on an individual level that the Matt Smith doctor has really came through in the end. I can sort of see that, but I mean, it, I mean, if he really was was that down with it, I don't think he would have let the other gangers survive. Well, he's he still has that problem that he had back as the tenant doctor, where he just does not want to witness a genocide take place. Some of them had to live, just because he didn't want this new race to die out. Yeah, but I mean. Actually, after he said the TARDIS stabilized them, they're no longer flesh. I don't know how literally that was intended, though. I mean, that could be the case. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I mean, but the one thing is with with the Amy flesh, that was never a sentient being. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the things that seems weird about it to me. Yeah. Rescue that one, but let one of the sentient ones die. Uh, well, I mean... Well, one one thing that bothered me with that last scene where you have the John Smith, the and the other other lady, um, I forget her name right now. It seemed like Jennifer wasn't Jennifer Monster wasn't really beating on that door all that hard. Yeah. And like it seemed like only one person had to stay behind. Pretty much. I mean, it would have been nice if the doctor would have just saved himself, but I understand sort of the symbolism they were going for with having one of the directors stay behind and go down with the ship. Yeah, it made it made sense from that point of view, but it also just seemed like they needed to contrive circumstances for only one of each person to make it out. Yeah, and I did think that was disappointing. I was hoping that at least one set survived, though of course one set might have survived with what the doctor said about his ganger, yeah. that you know your molecular structures, cohesion is different because it was spawned from a time lord, I guess. But that's one of those things we had to wait and see. Because could that be the doctor that we actually see die? We don't know yet. We have to wait and see. That'd be so cool. Yeah. Maybe it's a little girl. Maybe he regenerated. Time Lords <laughs> cannot switch sexes. I don't care what you say, Gaiman. I think the doctor lied. But yeah, let's let's get down to the heart of this episode. Let, let's just let's dive in there. Amy not being Amy this entire time. Yeah. My mind! Yeah. My mind! Oh my god! I was like... I thought my head was gonna pop off just because I was like seizuring it so hard. Yeah, it, it was sort of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And was not expecting it. Oh! Yeah, um, though actually going back and watching the first two episodes of the season because I had to figure out where she was taken, from what I could gather, it happened between the first and second episode within those three months. Um, because the first time we see her, see the one-eyed lady, it's in the second half, uh, Day of the Moon. Yeah. So, and she said she was pregnant in The Impossible Astronaut. So I'm guessing shortly after The Impossible Astronaut, whoever kidnapped her, kidnapped her. Um, so, and then, yeah, it, it's, because like they said, I mean, Amy hasn't been Amy for a long time. It, would have been, it could have been the silence that would have explained her lack of memory of being kidnapped. Um, well, they did say she was asleep and in a coma. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if they got her, why she was in a coma? Because everybody was separated. Nobody was with anybody else. Mm -hmm. That leaves a large window of being kidnapped. 
Um, they might have taken her while she was asleep. Because uh, in, in the in the in, po in the day of the moon, she actually says the the person in the window says she's asleep, okay. and she was dreaming. Oh, she's just dreaming. So I mean, there's they might have kidnapped her while she was asleep. Um, and honestly, I don't think it's a silence. I think it might have to do with either one or two things: the reason why the TARDIS exploded, or River. But that's a whole other theory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this episode sort of threw off everywhere I thought the season was going. And shows the brilliance of Moffat. Um, and and let, let me throw this out here, this, this timeline I devised, which I find is really interesting. During the three, you know, we, we know Amy was, or I speculate Amy was kidnapped during those three months. Three months of pregnancy. Then at the end of Day of the Moon, little girl, uh, Time Lord, or whatever she is, regenerates six months later. So the time Amy's having the baby is the same time that little girl's regenerating. I mean, I don't know how that's going to play into one another, if it's going to play into one another, but it's, you know, it's a very inter interesting coincidence that both are occurring nine months later. That is true. Yeah. So what time period do you think Amy, Amy is in right now? Super awesome future. Super awesome future. Like the 51st century or the 31st century? Because I'm getting my dates confused here, like I always do. I don't know. I'm not that good at... Okay, what, what I'm referring to is, um, if I remember correctly, River mostly exists, I think, within the 31st or 51st centuries. I can't remember off the top of my head. As as I'm speculating that, yeah, continue, please. Amy might right now be giving birth to a certain river song. Um, so Could that tie in with the new gaming episode with the river and the. Well, no. What I think the river and uh, the, the, the only water in the forest is river. I think that ties into the Vashnorad episode, the science in the library, okay. where river, quote unquote dies. So I'm curious, like I said, um, is, isn't that a two-part episode? It is a two-part episode. It's a phenomenal two-part episode. But it wouldn't make sense for the TARDIS to warn the Doctor about something that's already happened. Or something that's gonna be happening. Like, they have to go back to, to that, that place. Because yeah. there's something else that was, okay, you know River has the journal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a, one other thing that was left in the library. Journal. Was the journal. Okay. So, I mean, they might need to go back, one, to rescue, rescue River, and also to reclaim that journal. Because that journal, I mean, if the Daleks ever got a hold of it, the Cybermen, the Master, any enemy of the Doctor got a hold of that book, they could cause so much trouble for the Doctor. Yeah. I mean, it's like, why not destroy it? I mean, he, a tenant, tenant's Doctor took a real big chance of leaving it there. But of course this is Moffat, and I really think that stuff's gonna tie back into that episode. I, I have a, a real strong suspicion now. And like I said, you know, we might not get River back until the anniversary season, but um, I think that line is a reference to River from the Science of the Library. Okay. Or so I hope. You think they'd wait that long on bringing her back? Well, I mean, we... We've only seen her die. We haven't seen anything else about the character. Yeah. We still haven't seen who the great man she kills is, which, but I think that's going to happen next episode because I know River's coming back. And I think Moffat did say at some point we were going to see that. And two, I think by the end of the season, we're supposed to actually know who River is. Um, so Moffat says. So, I mean, we still have all this time with River, and we still haven't seen the first time she even met the Doctor. So, I mean... We have time to play with that character for a while before they need to go back and rescue her. Okay. Wait a minute. I just realized. This is the first story of the season where Rory doesn't die. That's weird. 